Hello everybody! Hello! My name is Paul. Welcome one and all. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more seriously, face to face, or as it were, about the upcoming series that we're doing for Leisure Suit Larry. It's a series I've been uh, requested to do for a long time, and I'm, I'm pleased to finally do it. I recorded, uh, I don't know, maybe the first two parts of Leisure Suit Larry 1, uh, about uh, almost a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, and I got really conflicted because this game was made back in uh, the 90s about a a fairly chauvinist character with fairly chauvinist writing. It, it is fairly satire, fairly parodic or par par parodic, one of those type, one of those kind of things. But I uh, I almost stopped because I even I got a little bit uncomfortable about what was <laughs> how Larry was not only treating the ladies and everybody else, but the way the puzzles were being solved in order to quote unquote conquest. Uh, it's really uncomfortable. I think I, I point them out as we go along. Um, I'm going to air as it were the very first two episodes that I made, but I do want to give the following disclaimer there. There is uh, trigger warnings about various, uh, you know, treatment of, Ladies, there's even um, and uh, God, I don't know how do I say it. You you have to essentially drug a person to get them to agree to possibly sleep with you, but not like roofies or anything like that. It's I think you use something called Spanish fly, which is supposed to be a big aphrodisiac, but you're slipping it to them unbeknownst to them. So that's way deep into episode two. So don't worry about it just yet. Um. Because of this, I some people may have seen the big long Tumblr post that I wrote uh, when that first happened. I'll link it down below. So here's the deal. I, I, I didn't want to do it at all, but it's like, no, it has to be done. It's it's a time capsule, even though it's kind of awful. It's It deserves to be seen. I will be editing it a little bit to get rid of some of the more nowadays objectionable material. Not to say it wasn't objectionable back then, but doubly more so now. Uh, but if enough people say, no, this series makes me uncomfortable, I don't want to watch this, please stop, I will stop. I promise. Leisure Suit Larry 1 is probably one of the worst offenders. 2 and 3 are fairly benign. It's not that bad. 5 is okay. 6 is pretty bad. And then 7 is actually a really great game. It's it's not that bad at all. Um, so... Keep that in mind moving forward. I need all the feedback I can get. If you guys do not want me to continue, tell me so. And if I get enough responses, I will immediately stop the series. And if it's that bad, I will pull these videos down if I have to. Because I, I, you, you guys know what kind of person I am. I love these games. I love the history. But I feel really conflicted about it. So knowing that, let's move on. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. So, yes, <laughs> because no one requested it, it's Leisure Suit Larry, the series. The series. Now, um, Leisure Suit Larry, for those who are not aware, of course, is the Sierra Adventure game in the classic Sierra Adventure style, point and click, blah, 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 blah. Leisure Suit Larry was uh, the brainchild of Al Lowe and uh, a handful of other people, but mostly Al Lowe and his signature style, his humor, and, of course, his saxophone music and jazz sensibilities. So, little history. Uh, the original Leisure Suit Larry, like, proto-Leisure Suit Larry, was a game about um, a leisure-suited uh, folk who tried to go to Las Vegas and get himself laid and lose her virginity at the age of 40, but just can't. It, well, you, you basically, you help him, you help him get laid, all right? Now, Leisure Suit Larry also... Let me, let, me, let me start at the beginning here. So, let's go way back. 1981, it was a text adventure game called Soft Porn, which I think Sierra um, produced... It may have been separate. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it was Sierra. And it gained a lot of uh, a little bit of fame because it was kind of raunchy and, uh, and whatever. But I could never figure it out. I could not get out of the lobby of the bar that you start into because the text parser system is so obtuse. Maybe back in the 80s, I would have been able to figure it out. But no, I, I, I got nothing. I was going to try and record it, but I'm just like, no, I can't. I won't. I refuse. 
So then, Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards, which is this game here, uh, has three different versions, not counting soft porn. So there's the original that came out in, uh, what, eight, no, um, 86, 87, I think it was. And it was great, but it was looked like the very original, what was it, AGI uh, version? Or it was it SCI? I always get those things backwards. I think it was SCI, and this is the AGI version. Or is this SCI? I don't know. Eh, I'm going to get corrected so much, but I'm fairly certain this is SCI, and the original was AGI. Doesn't matter. And then there was this remake that came along in the early 90s, I think 91, which is sort of my preferred version. And then there's the remake that was done, the HD remake, uh, well, not even a remake, kind of a redux that Allo had his hand in back in 2013. There was a Kickstarter that I helped back, and it was great. But uh, Twitter says they uh, almost unanimously prefer this version, even though I do really love the newer one, but we'll get into the reasons why I'm going to go with this version uh, to begin with. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and get ourselves started, and I'll give you a little bit more history as we go along. So, Sturgeon General's warning, uh, Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Land Lizards contains some elements of plot which may not be considered appropriate for some children. This exactly is what made this game so appealing to kids of my generation, because I played this game when I was, I don't know, 11 or 12, maybe? So, if you click under 15 or over 100, the game knows you're lying and it's like, screw it. So, I'm gonna be honest. I fall in within this bracket quite helpfully. Thank you very much. I'm not old, promise. Yeah, sure you are. So you have to verify your age in order to quote unquote unlock the ultimate raunchy mode, which really is not all that much. I think you just miss on a couple of animations. Like, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll come back to that. Thank you. Okay, good. So we passed the test. And maybe it's the second game that you actually sort of lose out on a lot of stuff if you don't. All right, so here's Larry, Leisure Suit Larry, in his trademark leisure suit. And of course, let's go for the obligatory immediate death. Bam! One thing I really do love about the Leisure Suit Larry games is the music. Uh, once we get up to... Leisure Suit Larry 6 and 7, which are, which are my favorite in this series. Probably 7 is my favorite. Uh, 6 and me don't get along recently, and I'll, I'll we'll talk about that when we get to it. But the music is fantastic. And Al Lowe is a jazz musician and really good at the saxophone. And uh, he wrote all the music for this. It's all original, I believe. The game takes place somewhere in the outskirts of Las Vegas, which we'll get to eventually. And you really don't get much of a preamble here. Uh, do you get any story... I think this is in the era where all the games, all the story was included in the manual. So if you don't have the manual, you don't really know exactly what's going on. But you still got the game itself. Ah, Lefty's Bar. It's gone through so many iterations in the entirety of Sierra canon. It's wonderful. Um, this is, um, I think there's a cameo of Ken Williams in every single Leisure Suit Larry game. I might be wrong, but I'm fairly certain he exists in every single game. Uh, there's Lefty, of course, the infamous Moosehead, and as with all Sierra games, you have your classic, you know, got your walk, your look, your touch, your talk, but then uh, Leisure Suit Larry includes a few other little uh, bits and bobs that uh, will become evident as we go on. There's the zipper, which uh, I'm sure you can uh, you can fathom. That's good. Yeah, let's not do any of this. Yeah, smart thinking. Why waste your precious time on small talk? In a way, he's kind of a sympathetic character, but he's also kind of a jerk. But he's just so clueless and dopey and wonderful. That's why we love him. But he wants to be like the cool guy. He wants to be kind of a Sinatra character, but he just he just can't. And then there's also the smell and taste, which allows you to use kind of your senses on the person. But generally, it's just used for smell and uh, taste and or use tongue upon. Yep, and immediately get slapped. Well... I think I remember this game well enough that I can make my way all the way through it without too much trouble. Um, our end goal is to get through this door, and we'll find out why in a minute, but let's, uh, let's have a seat, shall we? The problem with this is that Kenny turns his attention to me. Blah, 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 blah. Because Thursdays, you're not in a barrel. <laughs> That's an old joke from the Freddy Farkas days. I, uh... What was the setup to that punchline? We all know it. I think that joke is also in all the Larry games, as well as Freddy Farkas. 
which is uh, also an Allo game. Cram it, clown! You tell the boar on the stool next to you. The only thing, I, the only reason I actually wanted to do the the Redux version instead is because it was fully voice acted and it was actually uh, it was really good, but been done to death. Hey, Lefty! You greet the bartender with a friendly hello. Uh, well, I mean. Um, now, you can buy a round for everyone, but you have limited cash. I think a lot of, a big part of this game is making sure you have enough cash to, uh, to progress. So there's a little bit of grinding later on, which kind of sucks, but there's a way around that. But what we want is a whiskey. I'll have a glass of your fine, well whiskey. I never understood that as a child because I'm not sure if he was saying, Are you your fine, well whiskey? Is what he's saying? But apparently well whiskey is a, is a term. I'm not familiar with. I think it's just a, wor a term for the house whiskey, I guess. Whoop. He really works hard preparing a straight whiskey. Five dollars, please, for a shot of whiskey. Five bucks on the counter, done. You don't drink the whiskey, but you would decide instead to carry it with you wherever you go, precariously balanced in an open shot glass. And that's it. That's pretty much all we need from the bar. And speaking of, here's our inventory. We have $89 in cash. Uh, credit cards, which no one accepts in Las Vegas, apparently. Uh, let's see, it's 10.03 in the evening. I have my breath spray, which you do need to maintain. Ah, there we go. Otherwise, people comment on your breath, and it's really embarrassing. And then the uh, strong odor of petroleum byproducts coming from this glass. Bingo, bango, bungo. And you can also, actually, this, ju this jukebox does work. I love it. True to form, you stick your finger in the coin slot hoping to get some change. Yeah, don't. But we can use our wallet upon it and change the score. So these are all tracks from the game. My favorite title is Her Albert Has Some Iguana Gas, which is Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, which is kind of adorable. So why you, you can't not do that one. There it goes. Da -da. I think it plays everywhere. Yep, it's still going. And there's our favorite little drunk. And I think if we didn't play the music, it would play a little rendition of how dry I am. This also confused me when I was younger too, because this looks like a back alley, because it's full of kegs and boxes and stuff, but it's carpeted. So, uh, I don't know. But there is a rose, which we will take. We'll need that later. There's all kinds of interesting stuff to play with. You're in a dimly lit hallway. The paint peeling off the walls gives the cockroaches something to watch. An old table is pushed against the west wall. A filthy drunk is wearing filthy clothes, sitting on the filthy floor with his filthy back against the filthy wall. Judgmental. He's a poor little lamb who has lost his way and bladder control. Hello, sir. Ah, you sunny. I was about you and me having a little drink. That's his way of saying, give me booze. I think you can give him beer, he'll drink it, but what he really wants is the whiskey, because look at him. There you go. Love it. Ah, oh, yeah. I got it, the old spy. You know, you must be my only friend in the whole world. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my only possession, my only possession, you know, all I got in the world. Besides, what you got like me gonna use with a television remote control? There you go. There you go, buddy. Enjoy you some remote control because y'all remember that MTV show back in the 90s called, or in the 80s, something like that, called Remote Control? That's what it was. Yes, sir. Another one of these games that doesn't really give you any uh, direction, I guess is the term I'm looking for, which is uh, an era of the Sierra games I kind of lament. Uh, Space Quest 4 was the same way, where you were just sort of plopped down in this world, and then you're like, all right, genius, you figure it out. Yeah, there's a couple things we can do in here. I think we can read the graffiti, but I think we actually need to read the graffiti. But if you're going to do that, you might as well just go ahead and plop your butt down. You grab an ancient copy of the Ball Street Journal and settle in to sit and think. And I get a point for that. Uh, Lefty's restroom wall is filled with enough clever reading material, enough for you to read for a long, long time. Let's see, Scott me up, be me. Attention arcade game players, do not eat the urinal cakes. I don't get it. Uh, it takes leather balls to play rugby. Here we go. Here's an interesting one. The password is Ken sent me. Another uh, Ken Williams reference. You decide to write it down and take it with you wherever you go. A guy never knows when a good password will come in handy. I think you can also do this for a point or two. There we go. Nope, no points. But uh, 
I don't think you're supposed to flush the toilet because if you do, I think the room floods. Realizing your mistake, you quickly jiggle the handle, attempting to stem the tide of the unrushing water. It does not work. And we just chat in that water. Your life passes before your eyes. You doze briefly. I think that's his way of saying that your uh, life is boring. There we go. All right, so do not flush the toilet, but instead do look in the sink. Why look? Some woman removed her diamond ring to wash her hands and forgot to take it with her. Well, mine now. I keep expecting something to bite me. Got it. You briefly consider an attempt to return it to the ring's owner, but yeah, return to your normal self and pocket it instead. Bam. Now, me and Leisure Suit Larry, let's let's get a little bit into like how it sort of evolved. Something died in there? Yeah. Um, the answer to that question, it really hasn't because uh, I invited some friends over one day. I found the talky version of Leisure Suit Larry 6 and I was really excited because I never I never heard the voices to it before. And had the same narrator as Love for Sale. It was fantastic and wonderful. And then as we were playing it, we, we were just listening to all these sexist, homophobic, transphobic jokes and unapologetically. But that's just the way the political climate and the social climate was back then. It's like no one really paid attention to this in main media. But now that it's a lot bigger and you know there's a lot of social change happening right now and then you'll go back and look at this which is basically a uh, a time capsule of the early 90s and how we thought and how we behaved it's interesting to see how far we've come it's an unpleasant glimpse back into our past speaking of unpleasant things let's wrap on the lovely red naga hide door your naughty noggy nog sorry you rap loudly on the nog hide door which sounds like it would just be kind of like because Nog Hide's very soft. No. Hello? Ah, there you are. Yeah, what's the password? Well, we only have one password, and it is Ken sent me. The password is Ken sent me. You whisper through the open peephole. Come on in. Now, what's interesting... Oh, look, the moose is real. Uh, the, this guy doesn't sound like you have that kind of, like, New York accent. It's like, yeah, what's the password? But instead, we got, you know, we got this guy. The pimp growls. You got no business going up these stairs, little man. If you want to go upstairs, he says in his scholarly voice, you gotta pay the price. Twenty dollars up front, no refunds. Hmm. I do not have that kind of money. You can get this money and I think legitimately go up there, but he is sitting in front of a conveniently placed television set. A classic old CRT monitor with the optional hanger antenna, which cost you many, many dollars back then. Okay, whatever. Let's see if we can get his attention. You ah. the TV remote. Mm, oh, John. Oh, Marsha. John, Marsha. John, Marsha. John, Marsha. No, no, this is not doing it. Another boring soap opera. No, he seems vaguely interested in the program, but not enough to leave his postcard in the stairs. Well. Let's see, what do we have here now? Hello, friend. This is your old buddy, Tom B. Day from Motel 69. If you're driving down the highway of life towards old lost wages and Mr. Sleepy's sitting up on your dashboard throwing dust in your eyes, which is a reference to, uh, uh, was it Tom, Tom Bodet, I think, for Motel 6? No, nope, not getting his attention. Another boring commercial. And now, Aloha Productions is proud to present The Revenge of the Software Developers in full color and stereo sound. It is weird because this is a mono TV. Another boring musical comedy. Oh, it's playing my theme song. No, not enough. While Jim is fighting for his life with a raging female rhinoceros and eight, I'll slip into my tent with a native girl in this picture of my ties. No, I think that would get his attention. Another boring documentary of... Oh, all right. Well, I guess he doesn't want that. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. No, no, anything but that. Oh, come on. Mr. Rogers is a national treasure. Live from Malaga, California, it's the Cable Sports Network presentation of the miniature female wood wrestlers, 500 kilometer cross country nude bicycle race. Another boring cable sports show? That sounds like the most immensely popular spectator sport I have ever heard of. And next, Masterpiece Theater presents a special 3D broadcast of Nagahide Goddesses of Oakhurst. So many California references. Oh yeah, I love it when you do that. Ooh, it hurts so good. Pull it out a little deeper. What does that even mean? Um, how are we getting this on air TV, by the way? This TV is not even plugged in. Uh, well, it's got his attention. Hey, do it out of the way of the TV. All right, well. 
Uh, where's his hand? Is that just a pocket or is his... I don't want to know. Well, hello there, Miss Sassy Britches. I want this box of candies, which he does not mind me taking. Now here comes the, the more creepy aspect of this game. And this, I think, holds true for all of them. If you look at the person, you get a close-up of them. Which, uh, I mean, this is this is fine. The artwork is is great and all, but uh, you can also, like, look at very specific body parts. Like, yeah, like you look at their eyes, the nose, the jaws, and of course, the chest. And she's like, what do you come up here to do? Look. So, yeah, she is a, uh, a professional uh, person. Well, I came to Lost Wages to lose it, so lose it we shall. Oh, I gotta take them off one article at a time. And I don't wear underwear. Larry Goes Commando, that's the name of the seventh game. Or is it the sixth? No, the eighth. Whatever. Bah. And be glad this is censored. These are two people that you really don't want to see in any kind of compromising situation. And it doesn't really matter how you scored on that, uh, that test, that will always be censored. Although successful, you feel less satisfied. T uh, technically speaking, you're no longer a virgin, but for some reason, the thrill just wasn't there. You vow to continue your quest until you please your heart, not just your other organs. Which is uh, kind of a cute little, you know, he's not out just to get laid, he's out for, he's out for love. Now, I'm not going to do much else up here right now, and I'm gonna, I'll show you why. Because uh, even in the 90s, they knew why proper contraception was a good idea. Uh oh, a little bit more than I bargained for, my pants. Oh, oh there it goes, all gone. <laughs> While life may be possible, yeah, to you it is no longer worth living. Yes, your penis literally explodes if you don't protect yourself with uh, what's her face. But there is something else we need to do while we're up here. I think it's through this open window. The one thing I do like about the Redux also is they changed a lot of the puzzles kind of fundamentally. Uh, yeah, that's what we need. I think we need this bottle of whatever. Uh, but, oh, I forgot how to get to it. Uh, actually, I don't think we get to it just yet. What we actually need to do right now is down here. There, oh. Fan dabby dabulous, but yuck. But there's always something good in here. Amidst the sordid odiferous refuse from Lefty's clientele, you discover Lefty's old left-handed hammer lying at the bottom of a dumpster covered with trash. So I will take that. Digging in the past innumerable limp celery stalks in this morning's Bloody Marys, you find Lefty's hammer. Wipe it off as much as you can and stuff it into your pocket. Done. All right. And I think there's a couple other things we need before we can get over there, but I don't quite remember... But it doesn't really matter. But we have all, I think we have everything we need from Lefties at the moment. So here's how we get around. We can't walk from place to place. If you try walking over here, you can't. But if you walk into the street, you get run over. But however, if you look at this little sign, taxi stand, put your hand on that, whistle loudly, and there you go. Eventually. There we go. Beautiful. I just love the 90s art style here. It's wonderful. Vowing to hold your breath forever, you enter this miserable excuse for public transportation. Whoop. Uh, the cabbie snarls, where to, buddy, as he starts the meter running. And this backwards is eat me, which I like. Well, where's the action? Here we go. Looking for action, huh? This town's really full of it. We got disco full of foxes this time of night. Den's there's the casino next to the all-night wind chapel. We got a lovely bar, but you've already been here. Me, I like the convenience store next to the disco, but of course, that's just personal preference. According to this cabbie, is all there is to do with the entirety of Las Vegas. Um, our first stop should be the convenience store, because, you know, if we're gonna go visit uh, that lady of the night, then we should be prepared. You got it, Mac. And there is no skipping these scenes at all. Everything you do takes at least 30 seconds to get anywhere. Kind of Lucas artsy when, uh, when you think about it. $10 cab ride. You do have to make sure you pay him. Otherwise, he will beat you senseless. Now, here's a fun little thing. There's a pay phone over here. Here's an idea. If you look at it, um, you can dial this number 555-6969. And I'm going to save here, and uh, we're going to come back to this because we're going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of audience participation. It's kind of a Mad Lib, as it were. Oh, I got to I got to freshen my breath again. Ah, 
Bianca. I wonder if he can even still buy that stuff. All right, here we go. Five, 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 six, nine, six, nine. There we go. A sensuous female voice answers the telephone after the third ring. Hello, and welcome to the National Quickie Sex Survey Hotline. Please answer the following questions. I may have something wonderful waiting for you. First, a few questions about you. What is your name? My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Ooh, what a sweet name. So tell me, Larry, what is the best part of your body? So we're going to skip all this for now, but I want you to see the questions and check me out on Twitter and I'll put a link down below. But uh, I want you guys to vote on your favorite answers or write in your favorite answers and we'll use our favorites and then we'll see what the outcome is. All right. So click the link, go ahead and fill that out and then we'll come back and do that a little bit later. I'm, I'm really excited to see what the uh, what the ending product ends up being. So go ahead and do that. We'll do that next episode. I promise. There we go. And here's... Uh, was this Abdul? I think his name was. I find myself censoring a lot of uh, jokes that it's making because they're just so ridiculously on PC at this moment that I just can't. So it's a gigantic convenience store, and there's a lot that we need. So let's. Uh, oh god, I forgot. Almost forgot what we need. I think we need we need box wine, which I think is this up here. Extra large box of wine. That's what we need. So we'll take that. Yep. You grab a lovely cardboard box of fine quote-unquote wine. You wonder how they can make a profit on this stuff, selling it for only a dollar a gallon. It's cheaper than gas, at least now. It was a lot cheaper back now. Let's see. Wine, extra buy box of wine, microwave ovens. The shelves are filled with all necessities of light. Dwinkies, Wallowars, Loritos. Hmm. Various colas, cheap wine and coffee. Don't see anything neat about this part of the store. How about down here? There are many magazines on the rack, but your eyes immediately go to the ones with the naked girls on the cover, of course. Can you actually take one? Uh, yes, you can take an episode, uh, an episode, an ep uh, What do they call those things? Oh my god, I'm blanking out. Like, what do you call, uh, the, the magazine? Uh, issue. Issue, that's what it was, an issue. You grab that issue, okay. Bam. Uh, after looking around to make certain you're alone, you actually, you quietly ask the clerk if he has any lubbers for sale. Lubbers? Lubbers? Sure, we got lubbers! Obviously, you've hit this area of expertise. Uh, what kind of lubbers you want? Uh, let's see. Let's go classic. What decks do you want? Hmm, for her pleasure. What, co uh, what color you want? Uh, doesn't really matter. Not gonna be staring at it too much, but I'm a colorful kind of guy. What surface you want? The rough cut? Ooh, that sounds awful. Why would you do that? What pattern you want? Mmm, striped is pretty passe. Plaid all the way. Whoop. Uh, you better go for heavy. I, I know where this is going. Uh, industrial. Yes. Yeah, it's all of it. All of it, please. Uh, yeah, all, every single bit of it. Um, I'm probably gonna go for the smallest one. Okie dokie, mister. Hey everybody, this weirdo does butter the heavyweight industrial gain spearmint flavored plaid lubricated color lib latex purpose out of small size luba. What a pervert! Whoa, I never heard that before. I didn't know it did that. It actually talks. Neat. Where are all these people hiding, by the way? And these guys look like the perverts to me. What do you do hiding out behind the magazine rack, lady? Bye. So let's just give him the wallet, otherwise you will die. Well, what the heck? Stop, thief! cries the clerk. Oh, where, you wonder? Oh, that's a huge gun. Force perspective FT dubs. Okay, fine, here's your money. There you go. Thanks a lot. Oh, his name is Saddam. Okay, that's his name. Saddam's liquor, frozen, etc. Okay, we're good. Hey, mister! yells the clerk. Hope you enjoy your heavyweight industrial game, spearmint flavored, plant lubricated, cut and lib, latex, from a small size lobo. I will, uh, well, in limited, but, oh, hi there. This bum looks like a man that could abuse a drink. Hey, man, how you doing? How's about a drink, shunny? I have a drink. Here, you can have all this boxed wine I bought just for you. It's even got a W on it. Stands for wine. Uh, don't you, don't you want this? Okay. Hmm. How do I get him to come back? There's the disco. There he is. I think how his head is like bobs back and forth like he's scanning like a Terminator. Blink, 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 blink. Look, 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 etc. He just drank a gallon of wine. How are you alive? 
I ain't got no remote control, but Shay, I'll tell you what. Here's my trusty old pocket knife. You never know. There's some kinky girls in this town. Sexy hunks like us might have to defend ourselves sometime. With that, he stumbles off into the darkness. Where he belongs. Good day, sir. You lose. What's cool is like there's the awful convenience store, a beautiful art gallery with pictures of what looks like fish. Lots of ways of art imperium will satisfy your every need for modern art as long as you're looking for something with dead fish. And there's the disco, which I don't think we can actually get into yet. The disco looks like a very swinging place. You say to pick, pick hinky, pick hinky, or maybe it's supposed to be pinky, pick, pick hinky, whatever. How's about letting me in? Either show your membership card or get lost, scumbriff. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. I should probably refresh my breath because I smell like a dead horse in my mouth. All right. Well, I don't think there's much else we can do here at the Mo. Let's go and visit some of the other places we can go. Also, when I was younger, I used to make the mistake of like taking a taxi from the convenience store to the disco, which costs you a million dollars. And they're literally right next to each other. The same thing with the casino and the wedding chapel. But I, I have a, a suspicion. Ambition. I'm gonna go back to no no let's not go to Lefty's bar. Let's go actually go check out the casino. There you go, buddy. That'll be sixteen dollars. It says you go to the casino, but apparently there's only one casino in the entirety of Las Vegas. Or lost wages, pardon me. It's quite nice. It's the 90s thing I've ever seen. I mean, look at these statues. Is that the most 90 the most 90 thing you've ever seen? People who lived in the 90s, bear me out on this. Alright, so we got the casino over here, and then the wedding chapel over this way, the quickie wed wedding chapel. Whoop. Hey. Whoop. Wanna buy a watch? Whatcha your buying? But what I like about this guy is you actually look at him and it's two midgets in a trench coat. They have nothing to hide. What a town. I wonder if you can actually like play along with him a little bit. Um, it's like, sure guys, I'm game. Hey, who's the real weirdo around here? Can I do anything with them? Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me. Say, you ask them, by any chance, are either of you named Shorty? I get a point for that? Weird. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything for us in the wedding chapel just yet. But we will be here eventually when we find our true love. Sort of. But I don't think there's anything I can actually take right now. Eh, no problem. I never understood why the whole quickie wed thing was so big in Vegas. It seems kind of wacky to me, but I guess when you're like that drunk and get like suddenly rich when you're playing it, you want to get married right away, I I guess. Seems like a bad decision, but then again, this is Vegas where bad decisions abound. Speaking of, I think he just wants money. Uh, hello, sir, the skinny young man in the barrel. Would you help a poor unfortunate by purchasing an apple? The price is reasonable, only $10. Yeah, I'll help you out. Here you go, buddy. Thank you, sir, says the skinny man in the, in the barrel. For those helping out an unfortunate person taking an apple to a reasonable $10. Please call again whenever you're in the neighborhood. And with that, he walks off into the night. Poor guy lost everything. Not like me. I now have an apple and how much money do I have left? $33 in cash. Which I'm going to need to grind out all the money in the world in the casino. Which is the most annoying part about this game. Because if you don't grind using the method I'll show you next time... You will not make any progress whatsoever. And I also like her because she bounces eternally on her left leg. And that takes a lot of skill, especially in heels. Well, guys, go check out that form that I sent you. Fill out all your answers for the ad lib that will be coming up shortly. And then we will see you next time in Las Vegas. But for now, as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.